Two former Soviet nations are fighting over this dam. Known as the Rogan Dam, this will be the tallest dam in the world located in Tajikistan. Its energy output is equivalent to almost half of the nation's energy potential and can even supply 70% of its power to its neighbors. That's the scale we are talking about. Tajikistan, already a leader in hydropower, sources an impressive 95% of its energy from hydro. With this new project, it can become an undisputed giant in Central Asia. For obvious reasons, this doesn't sit well with its former Soviet rival. This is the story of a dam that can either change the fate of Central Asia or spark its biggest rivalry. Tajikistan is a landlocked country lying in the heart of Central Asia. It is home to abundant mountain peaks and also plenty of water sources such as rivers, natural lakes, and glaciers. Logically, they have exploited their mountains for tourism and the water for generating electricity. As mentioned before, dams and other hydro plants account for a massive percentage of Tajikistan's energy. In fact, the country's biggest dam, the Nurek, generates a staggering 50% of electricity with an installed capacity of 3,000 megawatts. Imagine the burden of powering half of your country for 45 years. Yes, it's that old. Its first generator was commissioned in 1972, back when Tajikistan was still part of the Soviet Union. Given the age of the dam and the costly repairs from time to time, it's only intuitive to build a brand new one. Currently, only 4% of the country's hydro potential is exploited. That means Tajikistan has only scratched the surface. So in 2016, the Rogan Dam was formally announced by Tajik President Emomali Ramon. It will have a projected height of 1,099 feet and a generation capacity of 3,600 megawatts. Once completed, the plant will have six turbines and create energy equivalent to three nuclear power plants. Rogan will double energy production in Tajikistan, strongly contributing to reducing power shortages during the winter months when thousands of families need light and heating. Thanks to a more efficient use of water, the project will also increase agricultural activity through irrigation. Pakistan and Afghanistan have already declared their intention to buy some of the energy produced by the Rogan Dam, and many more neighboring countries are expected to do the same. Rogan is situated on the Vaksh River in southern Tajikistan, just upstream from the Nurek Dam. Besides the Nurek, there are four other major dams on this very river. In this way, the river contributes to more than 90% of the nation's energy needs. Tajikistan's energy sector has been in crisis for years now. This crisis is mainly due to aging power plants, many of which have not been modernized since the collapse of the USSR. Since the nation heavily relies on hydropower, climate change has been a cause of concern. The decreasing water levels due to melting glaciers are a big culprit. In March 2024, a major technical fault occurred at the Nurek plant. The whole country was plunged into darkness and some communities only had power for a single hour during the entire day. This only strengthened Tajikistan's resolve to resolve its crisis and ultimately build the Rogan Dam. The Rogan Dam is a rock-filled dam. Unlike concrete dams, the wall of the reservoir is made of compacted rocks. Since rocks are locally sourced and also abundant in nature, this type of dam is much cheaper than a concrete dam. Rogan Dam has a reservoir that can hold a staggering 13 cubic kilometers of water. This water is enough to irrigate at least 700,000 acres of dry land, and it will continue to do so for the next 115 years. As of now, two turbines have already been operational since 2018, but the project is far from complete. The dam's construction was entrusted to Waybuild, an Italian engineering firm with a solid track record, including its work on the Grand Ethiopian Dam, the largest dam in Africa. With their expertise in a $3.9 billion contract, the Rogan Dam seems to have everything going for it. Yet only 35% of the work is complete. Their initial timetable promised that the project would be finished by 2026, just a year from now. So the question is, why, despite having everything, is the dam still not complete? Tajikistan is the poorest country in Central Asia. It has a GDP of $12 billion, the lowest in the region. The cost of Rogan Dam is estimated at $6.3 billion, almost half of the nation's economy. So far, Tajikistan has already spent $3.3 billion, 
but still lacks additional funds to finish the dam. In December of 2024, the World Bank approved a grant of $350 million to help fund the construction. Again, this is far less than what's required to complete the project. They still need help from other institutions like the Asian Development Bank, the European Union, and Chinese investors. However, investors tend to avoid controversial projects, and the news surrounding the Rogan Dam isn't helping either. Building the dam would displace more than 60,000 people. Even though less than half of the project is complete, 7,000 have already been displaced. According to a 2014 Human Rights Report, the resettled families aren't adequately compensated. They face loss of livelihoods, reduced access to food, and unreliable access to basic services. Moreover, there's the impact on downstream communities and ecosystems. The Vaksh River is a major tributary to the Amudarya River. This river flows into Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. In the case of Uzbekistan, the nation is concerned about the dam's impact on its export economy. One of their major crops, cotton, accounts for $1.3 billion in export value. Since cotton requires frequent irrigation to be grown, Uzbekistan fears that the Rogan Dam will limit their water supply. The dam has been a sore point between the two countries for many years. Despite temporary improvement in relations, Uzbekistan doesn't gain much from the Rogan Dam. When Uzbek president paid an official visit to Tajikistan, he avoided the subject of the Rogan Dama altogether. In fact, the two nations agreed on building two completely different hydro plants on the Zarafshan River. The joint projects are estimated to cost $282 million and $270 million and are financed by internal funds and outside loans. Basically, these two plants may remove the compelling reasons for Uzbekistan to support the Rogan Dam. However, there's still hope for both countries to come together. In 2018, the Uzbek foreign minister broke his silence on the matter. He stated, We do not want our Tajik friends should stop the construction of the Rogan Dam, but we hold to certain guarantees in accordance. In a nutshell, they need some kind of guarantee that the highly debated dam won't cause them harm. So if Tajikistan knows how to play smart diplomacy, they have a shot after all. However, it's important to note that Uzbekistan isn't the main obstacle in the way of the Rogan Dam. There's something much more dangerous that even Tajikistan can't control. The Vaksh River on which the Rogan Dam is located is drying up. For decades, this river has been the lifeblood of Tajikistan's hydro industry, feeding not just Rogan, but several other major dams. But now, climate change is disrupting the natural water cycle. The Vaksh River is primarily glacier-fed, meaning its water comes from melting ice in the Pamir Mountains. These glaciers have been shrinking at an alarming rate, and scientists warn that within a few decades, many of them could disappear entirely. In 2020, Tajik officials released a statement notifying residents that there would be electricity use limits and outages throughout the country. This was because the river's output volume was slashed by half. Consequently, the water level of the Nurek Reservoir had fallen by 58 feet compared to 2019. Less water ultimately means lesser energy produced by the dam. So if such a major dam is facing this issue, there's no guarantee about the new Rogan Dam. What's the point of spending billions if water levels are too low to sustain power generation? Now, even if the dam is built, it still needs a decade from now to be operational. So realistically, Tajikistanis would have to wait at least 10 years for their dream to be realized. While citizens have no other option but to be patient, people outside Tajikistan are not so patient. Remember that half the dam's appeal was that it will be a major power supplier for Central Asian countries. Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan were supposed to be major clients of the Rogan Dam. However, these countries seem to be moving in a different direction. Kazakhstan is currently working to build its first power plant in the next eight years. More than 70% of Kazakhs voted in favor of the construction of the nuclear power plant, showing a strong public appeal. Uzbekistan also has a deal in place to build a nuclear plant with Russia's help. Meanwhile, Kyrgyzstan is also considering the construction of a nuclear power plant as a means to address its energy needs. They are also planning to create a 2000 megawatt dam to further relieve its stress. At this point, you can't really blame any of these countries for backing off. They had no formal contract or deal with Tajikistan, 
and have only signed their respective MOUs. The distrust surrounding the Rogan Dam has to do with its troubled history. The dam's construction has been halted at least four times, all for different reasons. Rogan Dam was first proposed more than 60 years ago when Tajikistan was still a part of the Soviet Union. It was designed as part of a broader Soviet plan to industrialize Tajikistan, which was then one of the least developed republics in the USSR. The dam would provide a reliable source of hydroelectric power to fuel industrial and agricultural development in the region. Construction officially began in 1976 to build the world's tallest dam. However, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the Rogan Dam had to struggle to survive. Tajikistan was struggling financially, and this slowed the progress of the dam. In 1993, a major flood destroyed much of the progress made, including parts of the rock fill structure and diversion tunnels. This halted construction entirely. The next year, the country signed a deal with Russia to complete the dam, but it was never implemented. After waiting more than a decade, Tajikistan tried to take matters into its own hands. In 2010, they launched an IPO to raise $1.4 billion to finish construction of the dam. However, they could only raise 10% of the required amount. It was crystal clear that a project as huge as the Rogan Dam could only be carried out with outside help. This was when World Bank was brought into the loop to finance Rogan's construction. They suspended the dam's construction until they completed their feasibility studies. After their assessment wrapped up, the project was revived once again in 2016. Most optimistic predictions suggest that Rogan Dam will be completed by 2029, while the realistic ones point as far as 2035. At this point, it's not even about completion date. It's about how Tajikistan will fill its energy gap until Rogan isn't complete. For now, the country is modernizing its existing plants and creating new power projects to avert the crisis. Tajik President Emomali Ramon is confident that the country will have no energy deficit by 2027. Only time can tell how true that claim will be. What's interesting about hydro energy is that the world is adopting two opposite approaches. Some countries are building dams while others are viciously tearing them down. Surprisingly, America is one of the nations actively removing dams. To learn why, this next video is just for you. Anyway, thanks for watching and we will catch up in the next one.